from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time. Role players everywhere. Uh, all the world's a role playing game. If you you know if if you're using it in a metaphor to talk about the whole world, which I'm not, but I accidentally did it because in my mind, even even when it's unintentional, my mind goes off topic and gets you know because it's time for sleep with me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Hey everybody! Before we uh, get to get on with the show here, I just want to let you know that Sleep with Me is uh, uh, supposed to be a port in the storm, and the, and the port is uh, you know like I've been talking about, trying to be strong and soft at the same time. And we do have an agenda on the show, creating a place uh, where we're built on empathy and compassion for you who's listening, so you have a, 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 a safe place, a safe harbor to fall asleep in, to take your mind off of stuff, but to keep you company. So. So that's why the show's here. But if you need more support, there's links to organizations you can connect with right now in our show notes, uh, helplines and text lines. And if you're trying to live with empathy and compassion and to support the lives of the members of our community, if you say, yeah, black lives matter, what can I do to change, uh, to help point things in the right direction? There's links to organizations you can connect with uh, to start on that journey or if you've been impacted uh, to help uh, in, in our show notes. It's right in that side of your podcast app. And then here is a couple of sponsors that enable me to be here twice a week for you. Thanks. Hey, everybody, it's Scoots. I'm here to talk to you about our Patreon, our membership program. You can sign up at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Are you a rebel with a cause? Are you in a position to support and give value back for the value you get out of sleep with me for the good nights it provides? You know, I've been asking the patrons that. And one thing I want you to know, if you're a patron, please set up the bonus content in a podcast app. You could be listening to the bonus content in the same podcast app you listen to the regular show in. Like some patrons do that. But whether you're a patron that hasn't set that that up, you can go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron feed to start that. So whether you're a pay, you're on the fence about being a patron or your patron that hasn't set it up, if you're, you become a $5 patron, you get access to over 400 ad-free episodes that go back into the past, story-only episodes, two new, all, brand new ad-free episodes every single week, and two story-only episodes every single week. That's popular with the $5 patrons. And at the $10 and $20 level, the feed goes all the way back to episode number two. There's uh, hundreds and hundreds of all intro episodes. There's all night episodes. You get all the story only episodes. The Great British Bake Off bonus show, which only ten and twenty dollar patrons get, which we're really popular with patrons. But the most thing, the, the thing that I hear from patrons is they love the extras, the deep dives into the archives. But what they really love is that good feeling they get. And hey, that's me. Like I'm a rebel with a cause. I love that podcast and I love supporting it because I love it. Uh, so that's just something think about sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron if you want to sign up. Become an annual patron, you get a month free. And if you're a current patron or you're curious, you know, you could always sign up for a month and, and just test out the bonus content, but uh, don't miss out. Get it set up in a podcast app. Thanks. Hey, everybody. You've heard me say that every time it's tea time, but there's nothing better at bedtime than sleepy time tea from Celestial Seasonings. It's a perfect cup for your bedtime routine. It's something I look forward to. It's calming and it tastes amazing. Amazing. So many flavors to choose from. You know, I do find myself on that sleepy time vanilla, but let me know what you like so I can add it to my sleepy time repertoire. Is that how you say it? Repertoire? Whether it's at the end of your work day or it's to help you wind down for a good night's sleep. A sleepy time from Celestial Seasonings is a tea crafted with delicate chamomile, cool spearmint, and fresh lemongrass. There's comfort and relaxation in every cup. Celestial Seasonings is the original original herbal tea company. It's been blended in Boulder since 1969. So that's Celestial Seasonings, everybody. Taste the world of Celestial Seasonings. We got an amazing deal. If you visit CelestialSeasonings.com, you'll get free shipping on your first order if you use the code SLEEP. So taste the world of Celestial Seasonings and get over to CelestialSeasonings.com for free shipping on your first order with the code SLEEP.
unboxing and then share with me your unboxing. Did you just get sleepy time tea or did you get some morning thunder? Did you get some Bengal spice? Is there a tea I don't even know about yet? Let me know. Share it with me. Get over to Celestial Seasonings and use sleep for free shipping on your first order. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. I'm so excited to talk about Apollo Neuro. ApolloNeuro.com slash sleep with me is how you can get a great discount on an amazing device. Apollo Neuro is a new wearable that improves your body's resilience to stress, and it helps me wind down. It helps me get asleep. I use it when I'm going to sleep, and I use it when I get up about two or three in the morning. I use it when I'm recovering from workouts, when I'm meditating, when I'm going on a Zoom call. They have all of these different amazing settings. But when it comes to sleep, what Apollo Neuro excels at is helping you deal with stress, which is a major factor that impacts sleep. Apollo Neuro is developed by physicians and neuroscientists. It's a wearable device that helps you relax, fall asleep, and sleep more deeply. Apollo engages with your sense of touch using gentle vibrations that train your nervous system to go from fight or flight to rest and digest more quickly so you can focus, sleep, and be more productive day or night. I mean, I get a video up on our sponsor page of all of the different settings I use on Apollo Neuro. It's been tested in multiple clinical trials and has proven to improve heart rate variability, which is the key biometric of stress. But I love it. I mean, I love having this thing. I wear it all day long and I use the different settings uh, depending on what I'm doing with my day. But then when it comes to bedtime, I'll either use the relax and unwind or the mindful and meditative uh, settings. And then I'll use the sleep setting for 120 minutes when I go to bed and then another 120 minutes. It's uh, when I wake up in the middle of the night. And I keep hearing from more and more listeners that are really enjoying their Apollo Neuros. So you got to get your hands on one. You got to try it out. Try Apollo Neuro today and get 15% off your purchase at ApolloNeuro.com slash sleep with me. That's A-P-O-L-L-O-N-E-U-R-O.com slash sleep with me. And you'll get 15% off your purchase. That's ApolloNeuro.com slash sleep with me. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one part of the podcast I need you to hear. It's where I pop my peas. It's where I thank the listeners. I'm really thanking you. Like those of you who hear your names, on behalf of everyone that's able to listen to the podcast for free because of 2020, 2021, thank you so much for supporting the sponsors and elevating your sponsorship. I could not do it without you. I want to thank Lee, who signed up for Headspace. And I want to hear from everybody that's using Headspace. Space. It's a free trial. You got to try Headspace. It's Samantha, who got in touch with Talkspace, reached out for some support across the deep dark night. Thank you, Samantha. And Corey, who supported Brooklyn and got some new Brooklyn in bedding. Thank you, Lee, Samantha, and Corey for all the support. If you want to support the show, you want to elevate your sponsorship, uh, you know, tag a sponsor, tag me. You know, there's free trials even, but we got some great sponsors. It would be a huge help to me in the podcast uh, and then I, you could go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors I'm going to have a sleepy supporter zone club up soon so then you can uh, you, you know keep in touch and I'll have some sweet stuff for you if you uh, you know to get in the supporter zone uh, that's the first part of sleepy supporter zone the second part of sleepy supporter zone is you getting the support you need there's links to organizations you could connect with right now in the show notes in your podcast app just swipe up down right depending on the app you use those organizations are right in there. Please use them. You're important. And the members of our community are important and change, positive change to support the fact that Black Lives Matter is important too. So if you want to take a hard look at your privilege and how you can change, how you can be supportive, uh, there's going to be links to organizations or if you've been impacted by racism, uh, links to organiz those organizations will be shown. So the third part of Sleepy Support Zone is something I support and I support you supporting local organizations and letting me know about it. What creative ways are you supporting? It could be financially or it could be with your, you know, what efforts we can do in this current, you know, environment to, to support other organizations. Just like Carl W. has been giving me a ton of stuff. Uh, let me know what you're doing. And that's the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, which is now over. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are Chris they? Posty Poster Zone. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer.
see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer. These are your narrators. Get support, dear scooter on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com. And we're so proud. Mr. Bard, I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. What do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out your turn out the lights and play breath. Turn out turn out never had trouble saying that i don't know 900 whatever intros uh all you could you, what you could do is get in bed turn out the lights and press play or you could do that in any order you wish or you know put the lights down low uh but all you need to do is get now i forgot what i'm supposed to say next get in bed turn out the lights and press play i'm going to do the rest what i'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever is keeping you awake. So it's uh, that could be thoughts, you know, things on your mind uh, that you know that are you know things you're thinking about. So it could be past, present, or future thoughts or thoughts. I guess can't be. What can you have future thoughts? I mean, you can have thoughts about the future. I mean, I could tell you that there's, I, I rarely make a guarantees. There's a hundred percent chance of me saying I rarely make guarantees on this show at least once a year. But if I was going to make a guarantee, there's a hundred percent chance I'm going to have some thoughts in the future. Uh, plenty of them. Ideally not all the time though. Maybe I'll be my, you know, I'll try to be in my body or feel my breath too. And then I'll try to treat my thoughts. But you could be having thoughts. Anyways, I'm here for you, not for me. But yeah, I have thoughts too. I have thoughts about the intro already. So that's the future. Future's already here, turns out. Uh, That's pretty cool. We time travel. I don't know. Was that a meta time travel? Uh, I mean, it's meta talking about it, I guess. But it, whatever you're thinking about, you could also be feeling something. It could be something you're feeling physically uh, that's coming up for you, or it could be something coming up emotionally uh, in addition to or independent of all those thoughts. It could be changes in your normal routine, your schedule, temperature, weather, you know, interpersonal stuff. It could be baffling. That's a lot of the times. Uh, the old the, it could be baffles. Uh, you could be in the baffle business. I mean, I know I love saying baffle. Oh, but don't get me started saying. I've already started saying baffle. So what is it? And this is not a joke. What's it a word when a word has two different meanings? Because you have baffles, which I think I'm actually not 100 percent sure what a. a so there's what is that an edge? So there's a na- there's a noun baffles. Uh, what has anybody ever had a boatload of baffle? That's what if I had a baffles 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 baffles. Come on down, we got a boatload of baffles just came in because they're literally we have them delivered by boat. Uh, you'll be you you see you come out. There's we got it for the kids. We got everything. Uh, but, 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 but if you're bourgeois, we got baffles for you. If you're, if you're not, if you're uh, some other word that starts with a B, uh, you, you're going to be feeling in, how's that? What's that word? If you love bouillon, you're going to love our baffles. Cause we got, you know, f- free bone bar- broth for everybody. Uh, you know, oh boy, are you going to come on down to bat? Are you baffled? Because, uh, so Whatever's keeping me awake, uh, change, I'm going to try to take your mind off of that. What I propose to do, which you've already seen, is to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents. 
which means I'm going to go, I have a voice that's not perfect for, for much of anything. I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up. I'm going to overuse words, stumble between words, mispronounce things, be confused. I, here's a here's something that uh, is just honest. I have a, people say, Scooch, you have a large vocabulary. And I'd say, well, I don't mean to quibble with you, but but I, I have a lot of words I say. I don't know if that means I have of, that I can use in sentences, but I don't necessarily always have a grasp of their proper meaning. So what is the word for, is there a word for that? Like, uh, my, no, I was going to say parlance because I know words, but I don't know where to properly use them. But it's like, I know a lot of words. I just don't know what all the words mean. Uh, so, so, so that's, so it's a kind of a technicality. It might have, you say, well, where'd you pick up your vocabulary? Mostly, uh, scratch, you know, where I find it, uh, I polish it. I say, oh boy, what are you, a bat? What is that word? Baffle. I love it. Let me pick you up. Let me dust you off. Uh, and then the baffle says, don't you want to know what I mean? I got a, gen- nah, I could, I got a general idea. What I got a general idea how to use you, use you, uh, put you to use. Uh, I could be a noun or a verb, I think. Really? Okay, so baffled, that would be the verb, right? I'm baffled by the fact that a word is speaking to me when I'm trying to get into a podcast intro. How would you feel, uh, ba- which are now a proper noun, baffled? Do you mind if I call you the baffle since you're the first? or the And, and then if you become my arch nemesis, I'll call you the baffler. I love it. Okay, so... The baffler, I love, or what if you were my best friend and I called you, so either way I could still call you the baffler. If we, this is, first we need to do some rapport building later. And my first stage of rapport building was to offer you a bed of baffles. Okay, because I got to get back to this podcast. So let me lay you down in a bed of baffles. Oh, that's nice. Great. So that's the baffler. Future in the future will be known as the baffler. Just a little word scrap I picked up out when I was out for a dog walking the dog in my mind. In this case, uh, so you know when people say my dogs are tired, this doesn't have anything to do with anything else I was talking about, but it popped in my head. We, are your dogs ever tired? Usually, if my, because people, refer, some people, maybe it's just in the U.S., they say, oh boy, my dogs are tired. Meaning, I don't know why you would call your feet your dogs, but uh, it's just a saying. It means my feet are tired from walking. But I had never heard anybody say, my dogs are tired from walking the dog, which is usually if my dogs were tired, I'd be walking it and then. And say, well, if I had, if my feet were actually, I'd have four feet, uh, then my dogs wouldn't be as tired. So, and also my feet are nothing like dog's feet or a dog, really. Oh, no, I think they say my dogs are barking, which all, like, if you talk about what I'm talking about doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, people say that sometimes. They say, what is this nonsense you're talking about? I say, take a look at this, uh whatever, the way we speak in America or in the English language. People say, I mean, I would be confused to say, what do you mean your dogs are barking? Why, why, why'd why? you take your shoes off? One, please put them back on. This is a sleep podcast. Okay, sorry. We've gone far afield. New listeners, I'm glad you're here. A few things to know. I'm an acquired taste. You may have already noticed. And it takes some, not only my acquired taste, what that means is it takes some time to acquire a taste for this podcast. So if you're scout, skeptical, you're doubtful, you're scoutful, you're just not sure, that's a really normal reaction to the first two or three times you listen to the show. That's what most reviewers say. Hey, it took two or three times, two or three times was the charm when I realized that uh, Scooter's just a, uh, Two degrees below charming. He's, you know, kind of like, he's disarming. He's not charming, bit disarming, though. So, 
give it a few tries. This is a podcast that, one, you don't really listen to. I think I've exhibited why you would kind of barely listen to me. Yeah, because a lot of my logic is a bit baffling. Though, I would say the most sensible thing, if you picked up a baffle on the street, dusted it off, uh, established some base rapport with it, decided to take it home, what better place to put it to rest than in a baffle of, uh, you know, of, of, of uh, like uh, your bed with some baffles? So, oh, so if you're a new listener, just uh, kind of listen, listen to the podcast loosely, just like it was sand uh, go running through your fingers. That's one. Also, this podcast does not really put you to sleep. It's here to keep you company while you fall asleep or if you can't sleep. And that's why the episodes are around an hour, is to give you plenty of time to drift off. So, uh, and, and so you have some peace of mind to say, okay, wow, I got plenty of time to fall asleep. I'll just kind of listen to this person talking. And uh, eventually, that's kind of the normal use case. At some point, you say, is he still talk? Was he still talking about baffles? Oh, no, now he's ta- telling a story. What did he? Okay. And then maybe the next day, as you become a regular listener, you have a conversation. At, Honey, what was that podcast? Was that person interviewing a uh, someone called The Baffler? Was that a new comic book podcast? It, no. What would The Baffler be? Well, it could be, I think in his interview, it was either the, the podcaster's best friend. Like, you know, you have that one best friend you got a nickname for, The Baffler. Or his arch nemesis, uh, which would be someone who's either, I don't know, someone who baffles. I guess if you were using it in a sentence, uh, you'd say the baffler. Someone who baffles or is baffling. Uh, or who uses, or maybe it could be they use baffles in some way. Since Scooter doesn't have a strong grasp of what a baffle is, other than maybe the poofy part of a whatever that thing's called, a comforter, uh, there could be, a, the baffler could actually say, no, no, I'm, I'm very straightforward. I'm the baffler. No, I'm very straightforward. I'm not baffling at all. I just use baffles uh, uh, against Scooter in, as his nemesis uh, to disrupt his sleep podcast. Oh, baffler, you really don't do that. You're just a figment of my imagination. That's how I, ba- that's, oh, okay. I'm bad. Now I'm bad. What am I? T- okay, so I'm. A, it's a podcast that doesn't really put you to sleep. It keeps you company. I'm applying for the role, just like the Baffler's applying for a role. I'm applying for the role of a boar friend, boar bay, boar cuz, boar sib, boar burr, boar, boar buddy, uh, to be your friend here in the deep dark night and keep you company as you fall asleep. The other thing that new listeners, it takes some getting used to is the structure of the show. I mean, clearly, if this is your first time listening, you probably are. You say, wait a second, I tuned in. Now I'm baffled. And this person keeps talking. Like, and I say, yep, that's uh, so the structure of the show. It goes like this. Uh, greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. That's so everybody feels seen and welcome. Then there's business, like sp- listener support and then sponsors. Then there's the intro. The intro goes from whatever, minute six or something to minute like 20 something. So it's about a, what is that? Like, well, it's definitely not 14 minutes long. It's probably like 15 to 20 minutes long. And it kind of serves a few purposes. It gives people an idea of the kind of nonsense. So a new listener, you say, whoa, this podcast is weird and different. Uh, Not sure how I feel about it. But uh, it's pleasant enough, or it's not bad, so I'll keep listening. And, oh, he's trying to explain things, and he's kind of also demonstrating things. And he's kind of, I realize I don't really have to pay too much attention to him. And that can take two or three tries to get used to. But for the regular listener, the intro, it's a stretch. It it gives you a a 20 minute uh, buffer between your day life, your evening life and your bedtime. It eases you into bedtime. 
So for a lot of listeners, they listen as part of their bedtime routine. Now, some people are in bed. They're drifting off. What up? You look great. I hope I feel as good as you look one day, uh, getting there and getting cozy. But a lot of listeners are doing some sort of other activity as they wind down or they're getting ready for bed. Maybe you're repoofing, maybe you're poofing your baffles. Uh, so it it just helps ease you into bedtime because I've just found nothing. If I went to just telling you a story after I said, rub-a-dub-dub, welcome to the sleep podcast. Uh, this is Scoots. Get ready for some sleepy stuff. Uh, I should, like shoo, 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 fra, fra, fru. And then I start, uh, maybe I would just get, they say, get rid of the nonsense words. Other than that, that's great. Uh, that's what a consultant would say. And then and say, get to the story. But that's, I, I feel like I want to give you a chance to get comfortable and let the sun slowly set. Now, you could skip ahead. You could start the show at 20 minutes. That'll get you close to the story or at the start of the story. 3% of listeners do that. And then some a couple thousand people listen to story-only versions on our Patreon. So those are some options. But just give it a try and see how it goes. Because a lot of the regular listeners love the wind-down of the intro. Or they listen during the day as well to chill out. So that's the intro, and then uh, to keep the show free, we have our sponsors after the intro. Then there's a story. Tonight it'll be our episodically modular series, an actual play podcast of some friends playing a role-playing game. And it'll be very chill, don't worry, like, uh, you know, it, it's totally relaxing and very just as confusing as this intro, I promise. A lot of speech. Oh boy, are there going to be? Is there going to be right in the middle? I can guarantee you this. There's going to be a long, drawn out conversation right in the middle. So, oh boy, I was I've been working on it for five days. This conversation. So I don't know how many characters are going to make. Uh, I don't know if there'll be any exp- exposition or backstory. I was trying to put a little bit of backstory into it, but it, like it, it, she was uh, the character. She was saying, "Well, this is kind of." Uh, subtextual you don't need to don't worry I'll, I'll i'll put so so much subtext into my talking that and i said that sounds like textbook uh sleep podcast stuff to me so that'll be our series and then the show ends with thank you so this is the structure of the show again it takes some getting used to but you can adjust as you need as you find your way to the show or if you find it works for you. Now, it doesn't work for everybody. Like I said, you could go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you for other sleep podcasts or sleep audio. Because this show it doesn't necessarily work for everybody. But most people it works for takes a couple of times to get used to. And, and the reason I care is to say, hey, check out some other sleep podcasts. If this doesn't help is because I really believe you deserve a good night's sleep, whether I can provide it or not. It's just a fact. Uh, you're a human being. You deserve a nice, restful place. And if I can't do that for you, hopefully somebody else can. Or hopefully you say, well, let me try a bedtime routine without sleep audio. That's great. Uh, because if your world's a better place, my world is a better place too. And the other thing is I've been there. Even like, I, I, I mean, I, I record these podcasts like... Uh, not necessarily in the same order you hear them, but I keep waking up wicked early. And uh, so I know how it feels, uh, like uh, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep, uh, mind race, you know, all that stuff. And so if I can help you feel a little bit better about bedtime and getting some rest, I'm happy to provide that. So that's it. I'm glad you're here. I work really hard. I yearn and I strive. I appreciate you checking this podcast out. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to be here for you uh, twice a week for free.
All right, everybody, it's time to talk about the sponsor, Making Furnishing Easy. That's Feather. Now, I, I live in an apartment, and I've moved. I'll probably move again in the near future, and it, it's just uh, moving is not fun. And a lot of my furniture is more transitional furniture, but now that I've been looking on that Feather website, I'm like, man, I really could go for a chest of drawers, a nice nightstand, a new rug, but then I don't have to worry about going to a store and getting it. How how am I going to get it delivered? Feather has all that figured out and it even gets better because it's affordable and simple. They've taken, like they've really made f furniture fit in the, whatever you do. Is it the 21st century or the 22nd century? I don't know. Feather's like the flying cars of furniture because I don't know if you knew this, but people uh, who live in cities move like six to eight times before they even hit their early thirties. And Feather is a furniture rental company designed for people who want to feel at home no matter how often they move. And furnishing a one bedroom can cost upwards of $6,000. With Feather, you could furnish a bedroom with high quality, beautifully designed furniture for the cost of your monthly utility bill. I mean, you got to see this stuff Feather has. And their delivery team brings the furniture directly to your home in as little as seven days. They handle all the heavy lifting so you can go from an empty apartment to a fully furnished home without lifting a finger or assembling anything. And it's not just furniture. They have rugs, blankets, Lamps, wall art, and more. And if you move to a new place with a different layout, Feather makes it easy to switch things up. You can get furniture that works for any space. And plus, by renting from Feather, you're choosing a sustainable alternative to fast furniture. You know, that's the kind of furniture I, I, I have. And I'm really excited uh, to, to be upgrading my game with Feather. So get over to their website. Let me know what you think. Try a different way to furnish your home. Right now, Feather has an exclusive offer just for Sleep With Me listeners. And it's an amazing deal. If you go to livefeather.com and use the promo code SLEEP, you'll receive $500 off your first month. That's L-I-V-E-F-E-A-T-H-E-R.com and use our promo code SLEEP for $500 off. That's livefeather.com and use that promo code SLEEP for $500 off. Uh, thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Native Deodorant. And you say, Scoots, what's got you smelling? like candy cane in the spring, in summertime, in the winter, who's got me smelling good all day long, but not only smelling good, feeling good. That's my native deodorant and my native toothpaste. It's one of my favorite parts of my, it is self, who thought deodorant could be self-care and fun, but native makes it that way. I've heard from so many listeners that tell me these same stories. They show me their unboxing videos. They show me the deodorants they got, the selection. Native deodorant is formed formulated without aluminums, parabens, or talc. It's also vegan, never tested on animals. It has ingredients you know and you've heard of, like coconut oil and shea butter. Since you wear deodorant every day, don't you want to understand what's on the ingredients list? And it works. Switching to Native from an antiperspirant doesn't mean you have to worry about midday BO. I mean, Native has me feeling and smelling fresh all day long, and I'm a really active person between the podcast and walking the dog and getting exercise. And that's the reason why Native has over 16,000 five-star reviews, because it works. There's over 10 amazing scents, including their classics and rotating seasonals. You're almost guaranteed to find one you love. You know, they've got the classic coconut and vanilla, lavender and rose, cucumber and mint, citrus and herbal musk. There's plastic-free options. So if your New Year's resolution has been to cut down on your plastic consumption, well, Native has a line of plastic-free deodorants in their most popular scents. There's something for everyone. They have a popular unscented option. They have a sensitive collection that's made without baking soda. And there's no risk to try. There's free shipping on every order in the U.S. And Native offers 30-day free returns and exchanges in the U.S. So make the switch to Native today by going to nativedeo.com slash sleep20 or use the promo code sleep20 at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash sleep20 or use that promo code sleep20 20 at checkout for 20% off your first order. Thanks, everybody. All right, hey, everybody. Welcome to our ongoing episodically modular series, Journey into the Land of Tomorrow. Uh, you can listen to this in any order. I'll just give you the basics. This is a li little bit of a listen in live play, an actual play of uh, a few friends playing a game, a role playing game. 
Now they're from a, you know, a, like another, like a, they're from the future or something. I don't know how. I, once again, I somehow got access to this uh, recording, but they're basically playing a bit like D and D, which is a role playing game, really fun theater of the mind. But this one gets better because it's set in a popular theme park uh, that has gone past its prime, and it really, uh, really lulling stuff. Uh, because there's no rides to go on, so they're you know they're just walking around, but just interesting enough to keep you company. And you know who's going to be keeping me company while I record this episode is uh, a Hollywood legend, a man who uh, I don't even like. Sometimes I don't even know what to say. Like uh, even though he has squeaky elbows. And sometimes he, he says, uh, "Don't I'm not moving," but he is because he just can't detect those micro. A man who moves in not only moves in mysterious ways, who moves in microscopic ways that are still I can st- that still get picked up on the mic. But he comes out up, uh, drives all the way up here, just to be with all of you, really, and to play a board game with me after, if you can remain silent enough. Uh, and so, uh, without further ado, I'd like to, 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 to turn things over to Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, friends beyond the binary. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's time for an adventure into the land of tomorrow. Spaceship swoosh. Yeah. Thanks, Antonio. Ready for another round of, of uh, the audience doesn't know this, but I've never had a victory at John August's game, uh, One Bunny Kiss, which one day, you know, I recorded an unboxing of it. One day that unboxing episode will come out, but uh, so yeah, um, that like uh, I, I still have Antonio's bested me every time and everybody else I've played with, uh, but one day I'll win. But I have fun playing it every moment, almost. But without further ado, this is Journey into the Land of Tomorrow. Okay, is everybody ready to get started? Uh, uh, Granada of Darmok, I think your job to, is to recap everything, unless you all want to roll for where everything is with your characters and everything that's happening, because we did break in the middle of uh, an action. An act, I mean... In between actions, but, you know, oh, yes, thank you. Thank you to my dungeon master. Thank you for everyone being on time. Lord Von Chill got me here on time. I am Granada of Darmok, uh, and I don't like to to talk about uh, the the trickster god, the god of tricks, Darmok, July, you know, I, Lord Von Chill does not like me to get deep into my belief system, so I won't, even though I'm tempted. But I, Granada of Darmok, or uh, Granada of Darmok, am a quick fingered, fleet footed rogue, you might say, rapscallion. I, he, I work uh, for uh, Lord Von Chill. I'm not a sidekick, though, though I've been referred to one. I'm my own person. I'm just uh, hired uh, to to work. I work uh, as a part. I serve this party under the tutelage. I don't know if I'm under the tutelage. I don't know what that means. Lord Von Chill wanted me to write, read out some thoughts he wrote down, but I refuse uh, because that wasn't part of our working agreement. But I'm in a band of adventurers that I'm here with, uh, and I'm reviewing our adventure thus far for myself and my fellow adventurers. So that we can, uh, we're all in understanding. So I'm Granada of Darmok. I I work with the the Lord Von Chill, a fighter of the highest class, powerful, brave, wealthy. That's uh, Lord Von Chill. Please don't speak. I'm speaking, Lord Von Chill. You could just indicate with your head that you know more. Oh, of course. I'm also here with Zell, our other fighter, more of a working class fighter, as we've been referring to Zell. Uh, but Zell has some personal connection to Lord Von Chill, 
I believe, just say, well, I believe we're a group of adventurers, so of course we have a personal connection to each one of us. But Zell's been dependable uh, in the heat and uh, and the cool of, of uh, adventure. Also, we have our healer, our nurse. Uh, she's a Florencian, and her name, but not from Florencian, like I'm Granada of Darmok. Uh, uh, Florencian is your belief system and and your kind of branch of healing and nursing. Uh, and that's Eleanor, who also, now, not just for healing, I've seen Eleanor... Uh, uh, caused some, you know, we, we, who, who, those who have opposed us have found out uh, that Eleanor is powerful uh, and quick and, and quick, bright too. I, li- I like working with everyone, not just Eleanor. And finally, the quietest member of our party, M. Watt, a wizard assigned to, to our, I mean, that's just a fact. Uh, originally, was played by someone. Uh, who Lord Von Chill was formerly friends with, uh, but we had another wizard, but then we were assigned M. Watt uh, because the other wizard had a disagreement with Lord Von Chill. And uh, they were, they were, according to Lord Von Chill, they were incorrect. Uh, but I get to be a little bit more balanced than Lord. But, so they left the party before we even got the venture really going. But the Wizards Council knew about it and assigned us M. Watt, uh, some sort of acolyte, very quiet. Well, I'm told uh, powerful in magic, but we have yet to see that. Uh, but wise and actually very uh, effective uh, thus far, uh, other than I'd like to see a little bit more like lightning or something. Oh, that's a higher level. Okay, well, understandable. So we are adventurers. We're we're here in a former theme park, uh, searching for a portal, and actually, not just a portal, but pieces of a staff or a stave, or some sort of magic item that we need to assemble to close the portal. Is my understanding. And once we gather the pieces, we'll find the portal, we'll seal it up. If the portal's not sealed, it could come under evil influence that could use the portal for non-good things. I think it's a portal to another world, um, and so we have to find it. Now, one of the impacts of this portal has been to bring life uh, and sentience to uh, essentially toys and, and, or combining sentient beings with uh, plush animals, uh, or what are those called? Animatronic, animatronics coming to life, uh, becoming independent beings, uh, both with, uh, good attitudes and not so good attitudes as we've recently seen. Right now, we're working with the steam genie who has told us where a crystal that we seek is as part of the staff we're supposed to reassemble. Uh, so we're, we're here. We've uh, scouted out the area. We've been dealt with some little green people, uh, gone back and forth with them. And now we're laying in wait uh, for Buzz tomorrow, uh, who we hope to surprise. Uh, or I'm going like I'm going to go look around and see. Uh, I can't remember the exact uh, details because uh, we, you know, we talk even when the game's not in session. So and sometimes I think a few steps ahead. That's my job's rogue. Uh, but so you could correct me. Uh, oh no, where was I high? I can't remember. Uh, but it was, oh, you're all looking at me. So here's what I remember so that we could start our actions based on this. Is everybody in agreement with that? Okay, I I guess I get to lead this week a little bit. It's exciting. So we we know that we suspect that the claw where the uh, the jewel is hidden is in an area that we were not able to access, uh, that the characters of this ride or attraction have declared battle on other attractions, 
and we've been tasked with defeating them for the steam genie and turning the steam back on in exchange for now knowing the location of the gem. We've dealt with some of these little green people who, uh, uh, something about dystopia is the theme of this ride, that uh, Hollywood sells dystopians and why can't, why can't we follow Buzz tomorrow into a utopia? Uh, we know that Buzz is working with uh, the Emperor, uh, who was, I guess, at some point Buzz's antagonist uh, in the ride attraction story. Uh, the representation of dystopia, possibly, but now they're working together. And I was hiding. I found a storage room. I don't know if I, where I think that steam connection, a control room. And I can get in there. I don't know if I told everybody that or even if we took a break. I thought we just broke in the middle of things. And Buzz is coming this way. And we should be hiding and waiting for Buzz. And hopefully we would get, uh, uh, we would be able to act first. Is that where we are? Is that uh, Dungeon Master, uh, theme park, you know, adventure guider. Uh, we're all hiding behind uh, wooden things that will not offer us protection, but will offer us the chance to uh, hopefully have one round of un unheed unheated action. If we could please tell us. Okay, so yeah, you uh, you're all hiding behind different uh, things like uh, parts of the old parts of the attraction you granada had seen buzz coming this way and you've all been waiting patiently for them and when i say them i think buzz had uh three uh like uh, of the characters the smaller characters from the ride is uh well i was calling them little aliens in my notes but uh coming along with buzz and so you wait until Buzz gets into the center of the room that you're all in. You're all hiding. And it actually just happens to be the room where Buzz just gets ready uh, to give commands and is talking with the little green people, trying to find something. It's actually the, 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 the thing you came through. And Buzz seems to be doing some thinking and some talking, but you can't really hear it. And so are you all going to uh, roll? Like, if you, if you go now, you'll have one, yeah, one interrupted uh, uh, shot at Buzz. Yeah, yeah. So um, we didn't really talk about this, but what if, uh, this is Zell, uh, what if I, uh, Lord Von Chill, we, we go after Buzz and Wada... And, um, Eleanor, you go after, uh, you try to eliminate all the green, little, little greens and, uh, Granada, you also go after Buzz. Can we start rolling for that? Uh, yes, you can. And, uh, as far as, so I, I just did the whole initiative first so that uh, just for, but so Zell, you have first and you use your, you're going to use your bow, uh, yeah, I'm gonna use my bow because, like, uh, okay. So you uh, you fire an arrow, and oh boy, it lands right in the, the chest of Buzz. It makes a plastic plunking sound, but it went for halfway in. Lord Von Chill, are you gonna use a javelin? Yes, I'll throw. Okay, your javelin. Poof! Whoa! Right into uh, the other side of Buzz. Pretty, pretty, pretty sunk. Pretty good. Wada, what do you plan to do? Short sword against the, the, the green people. Okay, you use your shorts 12. Okay, 12. Okay. Yeah, you do. You take out one of the uh, little, little which, which one were you? Number The closest one to me. Okay, that's LA, little, little alien three. So that's gone. You take that. You just get it in right in half. Granada. I will use uh, my, my uh, short bow against Buzz. Okay, you miss. Uh, Eleanor, yeah, I'll use my throwing stuff against uh, one of the little... Okay, you missed as well. 
So the, 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 the now we have roll for now we've already rolled for initiative. Um, and I'll run through that just so everybody's clear. But uh, LA Lillian Alien Three is gone to the big farm, and Buzz has sustained a twelve of damage. And I know you're going to ask, so I'll say, well, you could ballpark it as uh, Buzz is pretty strong. That slowed Buzz down just a little bit, but not a ton. Oh, boy. Okay. And, oh, so the initiative is Buzz goes first, then Zell, LA, little LA2, Lord Von Chill, Wada, LA3 would have gone first, then Granada, uh, then LA1, then Eleanor. Okay, and what does Buzz do? So you're all watching, and uh, you actually, like, uh, Buzz had kind of moved into a position where Buzz kind of moved to the opposite end of the room, slowly backing up while this was all happening. And so Buzz kind of has you all in a, within one, a cone, if you know what I mean. Uh, and he raises his arm and he presses a button and it releases what I would call a sonic blast. Uh, it's a it's a it's a blast of noise, but it's so powerful. Uh, it uh, it is more than just a noise. It has a physical bass like element to it. And you all roll uh, a saving throw against it. Uh, and Zell seven, so that's Zell. You you sustain ten. Uh, Lord Von Chill, tw- okay. Lord Von Chill only sustains five uh, of damage. Wada ten of damage. Granada five of damage, and Eleanor five of damage. Oh boy, that is not good. Okay, and now it's action time. Zell. Hold on, hold on. Uh, before we make any moves, could I bring up an idea here as, uh, uh, before, before we take action? Yeah, we're in trouble, so well, we got to get out of the way of that, uh, out of that sonic blast. We can't all be in the cone. So those of us that can do two actions, anybody, how many people can do like a surge or something or a second action? Like I know I can. So why don't those of us that can search close to, if we can get close and on the side of Buzz, uh, then we'll be out of the range of that thing because we're not going to last very long. I don't know how many pulses that arm, sonic arm has. Okay, tell me more. Uh, tell me more, Granada. Okay, so Zell, you, I know you do have action surge or something like that. So if you... See what you roll. Go after Buzz, but not with the. I think in hand, like, like we need to go. You know, move. Uh, okay, I could see if I can move after before my turn. But yeah, I think it's not that big a room. I could probably do it as part of my action. And Lord Von Chill, I think the same thing. Uh, Wada, you look like you're probably in t- trouble too. So what if you? Uh, you try to move out of the way if, the ne- if there's going to be another b- 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 thing. Uh, I mean, we still have a round of action, so hopefully we'll defeat this buzz. But Eleanor and Wada, if you still go after these little green, we still got a couple of green people. Uh, how does everybody, is that okay? We move and we sell, separate. And hopefully whoever has the highest HP, maybe you could jump in front of his thing out of the three of us. Uh, Okay, so everybody sound good? I I full I fully I think everyone's nodding. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Uh, Zell twelve plus your bonuses. So you uh, with your you're using your sword. You charge Buzz and use your sword. Is that yeah? So I charge Buzz using my sword, and you do ten of damage. You slash right across. Uh, you open up some plastic breaks off on Buzz's control pa- front control panel. Uh, LA2 goes after Lord Von Chill, but misses. Uh, Lord Von Chill, uh, tw- plus, okay, so yeah, you do eight of damage. Uh, oh, wow, yes, uh, I did eight of damage uh, as I charged again. Also, I charged uh, with my axe. Uh, 
Yeah, so you do eight of damage on Buzz. You crack uh, one of Buzz's shoulder plates, uh, and there's sparks coming out. Wada, uh, I'll use my short sword against an alien. We, 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 excuse me, like we, well, I'm sorry that Wada acted. Wada, you got six. I'm sorry. Uh, Granada, you go after Buzz. Uh, you got to eat. Okay, so uh, you did five of, of damage with your uh, your short sword. It's pretty good. Pretty good. I chipped off something, or huh? Cracked it. Cracked the helmet. Actually, the face plate the Buzz has. Uh, LA one, little alien one, uh, g- jumps on Eleanor and gives Eleanor a little just cutty poo. Uh, does three on Ele- Eleanor, uh, but Eleanor goes back with a sixteen, and to, to, like right after that, that's the end of LA one. Uh, and that's the end of that turn, that round. Oh no, it's not. Is it the end of that round? Yeah. So that's the end of that round. So. LA-1 is now gone, and LA-3 was gone before. Uh, Buzz is teetering. Buzz has taken a lot. Uh, if you had to guess, you'd say sub-10 HP. Uh, Sal, looks like you're at 12. Lord Von Chill, 17. Wada down to 4. Uh, Granada, 12. And Eleanor, 11. Okay, so we're up, but but we should be able to be blocking Buzz uh, uh, from, uh, yes, yeah, so I'll jump, I, can I jump in front of Buzz, uh, Lord Von Chill here, am I, okay, let's just, can you, we can, can we roll, please? I'm just saying, like, when I moved, that's where I moved in front of Lord, like, before, in the past. Okay, I understand, so, let's see, so... So Buzz, uh, again, uses the Sonic Blast, but you and Zell are the ones that are uh, in front of it. And uh, to, to you, Lord Venture, you take 10 of, uh, you go you take 10 and uh, Zell takes five. Oh dear, that's not good. Yeah, you, you take 10, or yeah, you take 10, Zell takes five. Zell, that's even worse for you. What are you at seven? Uh, okay, so so then Zell, well, I'm gonna use my. I'm gonna to, to take it to take out Buzz. Okay, you got a six. Uh, La two actually jumps on Zell's back and uh, does a little slashy of three. Why me? Why why me? Uh, because your location. Uh, Lord Von Chill, 10 plus 5. So you do 4 on Buzz. Uh, so Buzz is definitely sparking now. Uh, Wada, sword, short sword. Wait, wait a second. Why is Wada using... Wada uses a short sword to accept 17, takes out LA1. Uh, Granada, 12 plus... Okay, so 5. Okay, so Granada, you... Uh, you uh you 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 sink your short sword into the opening on Buzz's control panel and everything sparks and Buzz uh goes incomplete. Okay, so we're a pretty oh wow. So Buzz is taken out. Uh can we do we find anything valuable? No, you don't find anything valuable. I mean some no. And you're also not sure how loud that was. I mean, there was the sonic blast thing, so uh, you probably uh, you, you want to probably do, do you know? Do, I don't know. Okay, this is Eleanor here. We definitely have to do. I got to do some healing here. So let's see. Uh, I have. I think I can do six spells. Because the aid spell, last time I did the aid spell, was that, uh, yes, you're down, you did one aid spell. Okay, so I have five, I can do one second level and four first level. Okay, let me do some math here. So if I cure Wada, I could get, give se- so can I give seven to Wada? So that gets Wada up to 11. Okay, and that was the first level spell, okay. 
Okay, then let's stick with first level then. Uh, do four, seven more. Seven, four, seven, 14. So I have 28 more I can cure out of a. Uh, oh no, wait. Four, uh, three. We'd have four. I used one. So seven, four, 21. Uh, so why don't I give seven to Lord Von Chill? That's 14. Uh, oh boy, Zell, you definitely need, you're down to four. So seven for Zell. That gets Zell to, uh, 11. Uh, seven for Granada. That gets Granada to 19. And that's it with those. And then maybe I could do this one. And I could just uh, treat both of you. That gives me 14 more. So that would give... I could get Zell up to 18. And... Not, and then I guess I got to do myself. So I'm at 18. So then Granada's at 17. Lord Von Chill's at 14. But that's it. Wait a second. That, 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 that uh, yeah. I don't know because they're going to be coming soon. We, I think we should just head. Do we have any? Okay. I just want all of you to know that a steam bot came in uh, to the room it had been watching you, and it hands you uh, all, like, uh, some small uh, potions uh, and motions for you to drink. Okay, so we drink those. What happens? You, you all got about, you're all at full HP. It was only about, the effects were, like, three to five hit points. So you still had to use, you still had to do all that he healing, Eleanor. So it was a, when it was a, as the max they were going to just in the rules it was a max it was going to give you anyway. Uh, so you still so everyone's at full hit points because of Eleanor with a little bit of extra help from the steam genie. Okay, uh, Granada, you're kind of in the lead. Excuse me, I'd like to say something. This is Zell. Go ahead, Zell. What's going on with w Wada? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, why haven't you used any magic? Like, it, this is, feels like it's taking me out of the game because the Dungeon Master's running a character that's supposed to be a, a magic user. We could have used uh, some magic during that uh, encounter. Now I'm like barely, I was barely hanging on. So I, I, can, I don't think I can keep playing. Okay, let's. This is uh, Eleanor. Let's. Can we please stay in character? Can you tell us what you're feeling and what you what resolution you want? Uh, well, I'm just feeling like either the DM has created a character th that uh, is holding back, or a character with conflicts, and I'm not. Oh, you're you're looking. Yeah, please do it in character. Okay, give me a second. Okay, Zell speaking as Zell. You know, I'm frustrated, Wada, and I'm going to talk directly to you because you're a member of our party. I don't know where your magic's been, but we could have used it back there. And I don't think I can trust you as a member of our party anymore. And I don't trust your motivations because when we needed your magic, it was, you didn't even try to cast a spell. You just used a short sword. So I don't know what if you can tell us what's going on with you. Otherwise, I, I would ask that you leave our party. Whoa, 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 Lord Von Chill here. You can't just do, that's not, a, you don't have the right to throw someone out of our party. Okay, well, why don't we let Wada explain, her, explain things and then we'll go from there. Okay, this is Wada and... Yes, I haven't cast any spells, and I don't appreciate your tone or the way you're looking at me or you're speaking to me. I'm a wizard. I'm a member of this party. I'm committed to the cause. 
and uh, I don't just, I'm not a performer. This isn't a show, and I'm not a busker to perform magic when you command, Zell. We're a party of adventurers. I don't work for you like uh, other members of the party. I, 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 I'm I not here. I'm here to, 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 to further what we need to do, not to uh, follow orders. I'm not a soldier. I don't even know what else to say. Like, uh, also, I'm I'm a little bit hurt that you would uh, bring this up. Uh, okay, this is Eleanor. This is not a good time to be discussing this because those sonic blasts were really loud. And even though we've recovered, clearly we haven't fully recovered. And we really have to deal with this because that Zerg, Granada said Zerg or whatever, the Emperor was bigger than Buzz. And so I'm trying to figure out if we can go down. We might not even have a chance to scout what we're up against. And they could be waiting for us. Uh, and now you two are arguing. So here's the thing. Uh, what, what, uh, Zell, what do you want exactly? How can we resolve this quickly? Uh, here's how we can resolve it quickly. Either Wada performs some magic right now, like maybe some shield spell for us, or Wada leaves the party. Okay, that's not realistic, though. That, I realize that's what you want, uh, but uh, this is not the time for that. Uh, I mean, maybe the shield thing. Could you do the shield thing? Or Wada, what do you have to say? I, I refuse to cast a sh shield spell on command, and uh, I don't understand why you would vote me out of your party uh, because I didn't cast m magic. Like, uh, either you trust me or you don't, uh, uh, Zell. It's not like I'm telling you how to run. We're supposed to be building consensus and it seems like something, either you could trust me as a member of the party or you can't. So I guess uh, you you could decide. Yeah, but it's really tr tough for me to trust a member of the party that's not run by the party. Okay, well, is your issue with the Wizards Council that I answer to? Or is your issue that I have, you, you feel like I have strained allegiances? Uh because it doesn't, it doesn't seem like that's you didn't have an issue with it till just now. And not to break, maybe something came up between weeks. Uh, so if you're going to call me out, okay, whoa, 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 this is Eleanor here. No calling everybody out here. Let's stay in game and let's get this resolved. Uh, I guess I got to do more healing than I expected this week. So... There's no, there's going to be any performing of magic, uh, and there's not going to be any throwing out of parties right this moment. Um, so is there another solution, Zell, that you could come up with? Yeah, okay. Well, if everybody wants to be all consensus -y, we vote I I that uh, we could vote Wada out of the party for later. Or we could, okay, I see where you, let's vote, let's have a vote as a party to have a vote later to vote uh, uh, WADA out of the party after this is resolved. Or maybe I'll just see what happens to WADA in the heat of things out there. Okay, um, that's fine. Uh, you have 30 seconds to explain it. Neither you or WADA can vote, so it'll just be... Uh, Granada, Lord Von Chill and I voting, which again seems a bit uh, an interesting choice since you're dating. The, I mean, not to break character myself, but that's an interesting choice, but fine. So go ahead with your... Okay, we can't... Why we have a wizard that's not casting spells? Uh, something's up with that. And... Maybe I could get somebody else, another wizard, to come in and join our party, even though the person we had. So that's my vote is uh, this is uh, 
yeah, that's my vote. And maybe if my vote doesn't go my way, I don't know if I'll keep playing. So you're saying you're going to leave the party if you don't get your way. Uh, again, that com- uh, maybe you need to think about, okay, we'll have the vote to have the vote. But in between any vote, you need to think about this. And I want you to think about it. For, I, w- I, would li- I would assign to you, as the healer of this party, I would request that after we get through this, before the next vote, you present to me a uh, five pages from a journal you're writing as WADA about how you would imagine WADA feeling uh, if you were WADA and the situation came up. And I vote to keep WADA in the party, by the way. Uh, Granada of Darmok here. I vote to have a vote later to vote, uh, to, to vote, to have a choice to vote uh, out or in uh, WADA. Okay, Lord Von Chill, it's 1 1, so your vote, uh, this is ludicrous, uh, and I know this is going to be a great, bring great displeasure with Zell, but, uh, well, wait a second, you can't vote different. You can't have your two, you can't play two characters and have them vote differently. I, as Lord Von Chill, uh, vote to, to keep Wada in our party and, uh, uh, to take a leap of faith and see how things go. Okay, this is the DM you have to make. You, 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 you this is the DM. You gotta, like, uh, I'm gonna have to roll some dice here if things don't change. Okay, well, I lost the vote. That's fine. And I guess we got to keep moving. So what are we going to do? Well, I was originally leading Granada of Darmok here. So I'll. what if I scout ahead and try to look around the bend? Now, there could be a risk there. Uh, but I could roll for stealth and see if I could stealthily at least to see if they're, if they're lying in wait for us. Then we'll be prepared uh, and we could flush them out or something. Okay, uh, uh, that sounds good. Okay, so you successfully uh, crawl down the hall again like you did before, look around the corner again, and you see that uh, they're waiting for you. Uh, but they're like, uh, so you see the claw, and uh, you also see uh, Zurg is kind of paying attention, but oh, Zurg and a couple of the... Uh, Little green people are working on the claw. It looks like it's close, like it keeps shaking and shuddering. So their attention is divided. And actually, you sit there and listen, and you hear Zurg saying, hurry up, hurry up. Uh, we could use the claw against them if we get an operational, and then we could use it to get into the steam and, and take out the steam people. So pick up the pace. Uh, maybe Buzz took them out. Uh are ready, but we have to be ready in case the, some of the steam bots or something come. Okay, so that's good. They're not expecting us. They don't know about us. So that makes they don't know anything about us. So they're expecting some steam beings. So, so uh, or would we be able to have a surprise in there? No, the room that Buzz is in, or that uh, the Emperor's in, the Emperor's in the back left corner. Uh, as you look down, it's like a track for the, the ride vehicle to go down. At the top left corner is the Zerg in some sort of UFO, the Emperor. Above that is a claw, and it looks like there's uh, three little aliens working on the claw, and then two kind of standing like as lookouts near the base uh, of... Uh, like the hills that uh, supposedly the emperor is flying about, but those are just wooden things. So it would be like it start out probably as a ranged uh, encounter. Okay, so I report that back to the party. And uh, are we ready? I think we're all ready, yeah. Okay, well, don't say it like that. Uh, Eleanor, are you ready? I'm ready. Uh, Granada of Darmok, are you ready? I am ready. Lord Von Chill, are you ready? I am ready. Zell, are you ready? Yeah, I said I'm ready. 
Mwata, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, so we go in and we roll, and what happens? Okay, so you as you rush into the room, I'm assuming you're all starting range and moving in closer. Yes, yes. Okay, so as far as the um, initiative goes, it's going to go LA, LA4, uh, the Emperor, LA2, Lord Von Chill, Zell, Eleanor, Granada, LA1, uh, Mwada, LA5, and then LA3. Okay, so we rush into the room, ready for range, at least the first round range to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we do it, and what happens? Okay, so uh, it was LA3, 4, and 5 that were working on the claw. LA4 seems to be the fastest, jumps down, and uh, uh, tries to get you trips on the way. Uh, okay, Zerg, uh, the Emperor, you feel the you feel the whole ground shake, and then out of the UFO comes a uh, a projectile, a giant one, and it hits the ground in front of you and splashes a uh, ACID up on you. And uh, let's see, um, well, we got. Uh, um, Lord Von Chill takes five, Zell takes ten, Eleanor takes five, Granada takes five, and Wada takes five. Okay, this is exactly what happened last time, though. A little, a little bit different. It's like a, it's a, it's a, a, a missile, uh, an acid splash missile. Okay, well, it's still, uh, okay. Okay, then LA-2... Uh, it goes after Eleanor, misses Lord Von Chill, l- uh, got a three, uh, Zell, you got a three, Eleanor 17, uh, you, you were, uh, yeah, I was aiming for the Emperor, okay, so you get five of, uh, on the Emperor, Granada, uh, 16, I'm also on the Emperor. Okay, 6 on, on the Emperor. Uh, LA-1 uh, actually lands on Lord Von Chill, like somehow jumps up and lands on Lord Von Chill. Does 26 of 6 on Lord Von Chill. That's terrible. Uh, M. Wata starts to whisper the words of uh, something and then sprinkles and twists and then a thunder wave comes out of uh, the arms of M. Wata and uh, doesn't get to let's see it takes out uh, doesn't get doesn't the, the wave does not reach the Zerg but it does uh, instantly uh, wow it's just a uh, LA4 uh, all it's, uh, just falls to the ground. LA2, same thing. LA1, uh, gone. LA5, gone. And LA3, gone. Is that all of them? All of them, all of the little aliens are now no longer operational after that spell by M. Wata. And M. Wata narrows M. Wata's eyes and looks at Zell. And, like, then blows, like, imaginary smoke off of her fingertips. Um, and that's the end of that round. So, at the end of that round, so Zerg is, uh, or the Emperor is still very functional. Uh... Lord Von Chill, you're, you've been cut in half. Uh, Zell also, wait a second, Zell took, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, Zell took, uh, Zell, you're pretty much cut in half too. Eleanor, uh, Granada, and uh, Wada, you're down all five, but that means that uh, Zell or Wada probably can't handle another full acid splash. Okay, do we have any idea how long, like, is there a, 
Uh, is there anything we could observe? It does look like uh, uh, the Emperor is having to reload the Acid Splash missile, so you may have a, a round of time. Well, that's good. So we have to do it this time. Okay, so what's the order now? Uh, the Emperor goes first. Yeah, the Emperor goes first and shoots out three small darts. Uh, one goes to Eleanor, lands, hits Eleanor, does a three. One hits Granada, does three. And the other one misses Wada. Uh, Lord Von Chill, you get a ten. So you, wow, do you do a nine on Zerg. Zell misses... Uh, uh, Eleanor, 19, so 6 of damage on Zerg. Granada, 11 plus 5, so 6 of damage on Zerg. And Wada casts uh, the Thunder Wave again and does 10 of right on Zerg. 10 shakes the foundation of Zerg. Uh, so that means that Zerg is definitely uh, like... Uh, Look, looking a lot weaker this round. Lord Von Schill, you're down to 11. Zelda, 9. Eleanor, 11. Granada, 10. Wad, 9. Oh, goodness. So that means uh, those uh, those acids could do up to 10, 5 or 10 of damage. Okay, and oh no, Zerg gets to go first. And Zerg launches another acid splash missile. Wait a second, could we rush Zerg or... Uh, uh, can we, can we do that? Because you kind of started talking before we had a chance to, uh, slow-mo, you know, just uh, d d build consensus. Uh, sure. So all of you rush, no, all of us that have above 10 hit points rush Zerg. It's, uh, sorry, I'm speaking, Lord Von Chill took over again, I guess. Yeah, typical. Okay, well, it's a typical that, uh, so Lord, El, El, Lord Von Chill, Eleanor, and Granada. Sorry, Granada, because I know you only have 10, but we rush. Uh, uh, okay, well, it didn't matter because, uh, uh, uh what, uh, um, sorry, I'm just running some numbers here. So the, the Emperor shoots it, like, up into the ceiling, and it hits the ceiling and splashes down on all of you. But let's see, rolls wise, uh, Lord Von Chill, you take nine, uh, Zell takes five, uh, Eleanor, five, uh, Granada, uh, five, and Wada, uh, we, we don't know, but uh, Wada's out cold, uh, totally prone after w w hit, getting hit with uh, part of the splash. Oh no! But we don't. We can't uh, pause now. And actually, we have no, nothing we could do. Except move forward. Okay. So we're okay. So we ro So we're going after Zerg, though, or the Emperor. Yeah. So Lord Von Chill, seventeen, twelve plus five, seventeen. So you do nine on Zerg. Uh, you, yeah. You really you get get Zerg good. Well, yes, I did. Zell, one. No, good, thanks. Eleanor, 19. And that's it. Eleanor lands uh, right in the center of Zerg. Zerg falls out of the UFO onto the ground. And short circuits. Uh, okay, this is Granada of Dharmat here. I think before we search or anything... Can we, uh, it would be okay to lift, I, ha I found a, a storage room on my last, last time, on the last adventure, and I know we can get in there. I think we should just, uh, for the time being, abandon things. We don't have any healing, we don't have any healing potions. I think we pick up, uh, Wada, uh, carry Wada, if we can do that, uh, I mean, stabilize Wada. And then take water and, and lock ourselves in this storage room. Is that possible? Is everyone in agreement? Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Okay, so you okay, you successfully stabilize Wada. You say, okay, Wada's kind of, you know, Wada's stabilized, uh, but not awake. 
but you're able to 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 create a little thing because there's so much paneling and stuff. Uh, you easily create a carrier. You carry water back down the hall. At this point, I'll just tell you that any little aliens uh, that see you are going to freeze and they won't engage unless engaged. And uh, you get the door open. You open this door that's kind of hidden, like it's a it's a door to a control room that now kind of smells like wet carpet. It's actually the control room for both uh, this attraction and the steam attraction. But basically, it's a lot big enough that you can all lie down and rest. Uh, and uh, there's only the one door, so you can secure the door from the inside. And uh, you successfully all start to rest. I think that's a good place to rest and to think about things and to write journals from the perspective of other characters uh, to see what, like, I mean, this is just a break for the week. We'll just break right here and uh, see where things take us. Uh, good night. All right. I want to thank everybody that became a patron recently over on Apple Podcasts uh, or on Patreon. Sorry. Yeah, that's where people review the show. I want to thank Lemon, Eric, and Lauren. Thank you. Thanks, 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 and thanks, and good night. Uh, Beaker to Lisa and Patricia. Thank you. Thanks, 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 and good night. Bailey, Alex, and Erica. Thank you. Thanks, 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 and good night. Amber, Brian, and Erland. Thanks, 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 and good night. David, Aaron, and Haiti. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Mary, R, and Josh, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Riley, Phyllis, and Meredith, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Molly, MJ, and CE, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Brandon, Malika, and Laurel, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Christine, Ray, and Leah, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. June, Melanie, and Ted, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Jenna, Rose, and Erica, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Thanks and good night, everybody, for supporting the show. Sleep with me is here free because of the patrons who support us directly and then the people who support the sponsors. Uh, you could uh, Another free way to help the podcast is uh, just to spread the word. You could do that over at uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash refer. Because uh, we now have some like cool bonuses set up for people who uh, spread the word, and uh, uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'm glad you're here. I really hope I can uh, keep. You know, if you need another episode, it's ready to go. I just want to let you know about one more thing. And good night. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Better Help. You know, if you're having trouble meeting your goals right now, difficulty relationships, trouble sleeping, or if you're feeling stressed or depressed, Better Help is available. Better Help offers online professional counselors who can listen and help. And I've talked about this a lot on the podcast. Is that I've had a, a lot of struggles throughout my lifetime with mental health and with uh, self medication and stuff. And working with professional licensed therapists has given me the tools to function and flourish in my life. And that's one of the things I'm so grateful for is the relationship I have with my therapist, someone I can talk to who can listen and help me. And with BetterHelp, you simply fill out a questionnaire to assess your needs and BetterHelp will match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. And this isn't self-help or a crisis. Crisis line. This is secure online professional counseling. BetterHelp counselors have a broad range of expertise, which may not be available in your area. Their service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send unlimited messages to your counselor. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, and everything you share is confidential. You don't have to worry about going to the office or sitting in a waiting room. And 
BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so it's easy and free to change counselors if needed. So you can find someone you're comfortable talking to and working with. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. And this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Sleep With Me listeners can get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash sleep with me. So visit betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash sleep with me. And you can join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp professional. Thanks, everybody. Oh, hey, everybody, Scoots. This is a, this is interesting after, after hours of the podcast here. I just want to let you know, we've got this referral program up and running. If you're ever looking for right now we have this thing going for the piece top three shares in january february march uh we'll get a pair of sleep phones with a sleep with me logo on it uh, if you refer people to sign up and list it that actually become subscribers of the podcast you can do that sleep with me podcast.com slash refer r-e-f-e-r i think is how you spell that uh and if you like just we say no i just want a set of sleep phones you can get those at sleep with me podcast.com slash sleep phones now we have all like all three models of sleep phones all like different size headbands all with the sleep with me logo you can get those yeah, over at uh, sleep with me podcast.com slash sleep phones and use uh, sleep with me at checkout uh, and you'll get a little bit off your order uh, thanks and thanks and good night everybody thanks